So it, it, we were asked to talk about MVision's impact on Madrid, and you heard some of what uh, Lucia had to say, and you heard some about the beginning, and some people who you haven't met yet that were a big part of that beginning are uh, uh, Eugenio, Manuel Hurtado, Luis uh, Sanchez, who just escorted Luis out. You'll see him later. So I think over time, I hope you'll meet the people that really brought this to bear. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what's actually happened. So MIT's graduation is on Friday, and my youngest son has his high school graduation on Saturday. And this timing got me thinking about this, in a way, as a graduation event for Envision. So four years ago, that would be our freshman year, we began with a bold vision for creating a new kind of innovation ecosystem in Madrid. Now, in the ensuing years, we learned, we grew, we struggled, we matured, and now as seniors, we're radically different from what we were as freshmen. So, as in all graduations, it's a time to reflect on that transformation and what we've learned, what's happened in the recent past, and really what we dream about as we commence uh, into the future. So if we think back to when Envision really started to become real, concrete, was the winter of 2011 as we began to try to recruit faculty. Now the first 20 faculty were a diverse group. They came from many different institutions. They came from different parts of the world, Madrid and Boston. They came from many different disciplines, academia, industry, medicine. Though they were very diverse, they had one thing in common. They were willing to take a big leap of faith to join us as freshmen in building the enterprise. Then six months later, that would be July 2011, we officially launched our first program, and that was the Envision Fellowship. And we welcomed our first class um, Envision Fellows. They came also from all over the world. They took a leap of faith, too. They did not come to do a traditional fellowship in which you join a lab and work on a project that exists. No. Nope. They said, I'm going to embrace this opportunity to define my own project and to build my own project team. Now, you have the picture in front of you of these very first fellows on their very first day of this very first program. <laughs> And uh, they put on their white coats. And thanks to the incredible leadership of Maria Luaces, who, uh, and one of those that took a leap of faith, said, come to my hospital. It was then Hospital Friend Labrada, and now she's a cardiologist at, at Hospital Clinico. They explored the world of clinical medicine, and they tried to see by experience where they could make a difference. Now you've heard and read that the purpose of Envision is to catalyze change in Madrid's healthcare ecosystem. These are the catalysts, these people you see right here, these fellows and the subsequent fellows. Through the work that they've done, they've precipitated the changes in the people and what people think and do. Now, beginning on this very first day, for the subsequent several months, they spent time as problem-seeking missiles. They talked to people. They scoured the literature. They visited labs. They traveled the world. Um, what they'll tell you is maybe not that. They'll say, as they've told us, we had meetings, and we had meetings, and more meetings, and still more meetings, where they had to talk to the faculty to refine and defend their ideas. But in the end, these and the subsequent groups of fellows have developed a really interesting research projects, and that if they're successful, they'll promise to have a real impact on human health. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, throughout the day to go to Innovation Hall and meet these fellows and hear about their projects and see their demos. See them for yourself. Each of these projects was vetted by people from industry, from medicine, and from academia. And at all of these meetings, fundamentally what they were asked was not just can you do it, but should you do it? 
We asked not just whether something was an improvement over what now exists, there are lots of improvements, but would anybody care about that improvement? Who would care? And we asked them not what's gonna happen in one to two years, but to paint a picture that contrasts the present from what, what's gonna happen if their technology succeeds. Who's gonna use it? Who's gonna be affected? How does it affect the workflow and so on? And these kinds of questions are what's critical to choosing the problems that if solved will have a real impact. Now this approach of bringing together multiple professions and in fact working shoulder to shoulder with people from diverse professions is at the core of the Envision strategy. It's part of everything we do. It drives our programs, our initiatives, and so forth. And some of you are familiar with this icon that we show. We affectionately call it yin yang yang, an adaption of the yin yang symbol. And the premise is through a strategy like this, we'll accelerate the pace of innovation throughout the innovation cycle. So as you listen through the day and you visit Innovation Hall, you consider what's possible in your own institutions. I just want to close with three pieces of evidence that tells you and shows you that the fellows have been and are continuing to be incredibly effective catalysts. So the first piece of evidence is the new lines of research that now exist. For every fellow, there is one group in Madrid that is now pursuing a new research line. There are clinicians that are newly involved in research, there are senior academics that are bringing their expertise to new fields. The way this happens is the fellows, they define and defend a project and then they build a collaborative team and they draw on experts from Madrid and Boston. And they're the ones that reach out and engage this community and inspire these collaborators to work in new areas. And we're now seeing that these lines are persisting because the collaborators themselves are working together to extend the efforts they're bringing on students and they're extending it beyond the initiative that was first defined by the fellows. The second piece of evidence is that the strong pace of intellectual property development. Now this is in addition to the traditional academic output of papers and, and conference proceedings. But the fellows have, have really developed IP at a prodigious rate. So relative to the research expenditure, they're at about twice the rate uh, of IP development in MIT in terms of invention disclosures and patent submissions. And in less than three years, this is, this is truly remarkable. And this IP is beginning to make its way out in licensing and so forth. In fact, Envision's first spin out was incorporated just last month. And the third piece of evidence is the extraordinary people that have been involved. Um, it's really been a magnet for these people. We began with about 20, we now have over 100 that are engaged. And it's important to note that for the most